Hello and welcome everyone. I hope this message finds you fit and fine. We are in video number 49 of our Lakshmi Khan series contest and today we are going to talk about state legislature part 6 article 168 to article 212. It is also going to be a cakewalk for you if you have a comparative understanding means as we go through state legislature just reflect what we discussed in case of union legislature parliament. At the level of center, we have two houses, bicameral legislature, we have Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. Similarly, at the level of state, we also have in some states, two houses, Vidhan Parishad, which we call Legislative Council, Vidhan Sabha, which we call Legislative Assembly. Please remember, not in every state, we have bicameral legislature. Okay? Which one of the following state does, does, ha does not have a bicameral legislature West Bengal now when this question is going to be asked by UPSC UPSC is not expecting you to cram everything it is just that it was in news Mamta Banerjee CM of West Bengal she was demanding from the center that yes West Bengal deserve a second house so what point you got now one is West Bengal is not having legislative council another is power is with parliament right now so these are the states which where we have Vidhan Parishad as well means second house Bihar Maharashtra Andhra Pradesh Karnataka Telangana Uttar Pradesh now some facts related to organization of state legislature legislative council was abolished by JNK reorganization act 2019 Tamil Nadu legislative council act is there but has not come into force if UPSC is making one statement, there is no uniformity in the organization of state legislature. What would you say? You will say true or false. You will say true. Okay. Don't think that's a trap. Okay. That's a that's correct notion, right? Because we don't have bicameral legislature in every state, right? The Seventh Amendment Act, 1956, provided for legislative council in Madhya Pradesh. It provided but what happened however a notification of this effect made by the president so far no such notification has been made and that is why Madhya Pradesh continues to have one house legislative council Vidhan Parishad is the upper house as you know in case of Rajya Sabha we have upper house Rajya Sabha and Rajya Sabha is also regarded as second house similarly Vidhan Parishad means legislative council is an upper house but second house second chamber why because in some respects, the bills are first introduced only in Legislative Assembly. For example, Money Bill. Legislative Assembly, Vidhan Sabha is the lower house, first chamber or popular house. Why popular house? Because members of Legislative Assembly are directly elected by people. Right? But when it comes to members in Legislative Council, they are indirectly elected or nominated. We have 22 states. This is the structure. You are clear about this. Now, composition attempt this question what can be the maximum number of members in legislative assembly of a state answer is 500 so it means maximum strength can be 500 minimum strength can be 60 although there can be exception like Goa right territorial constituencies means on what basis it is decided that yes this MLA is going to represent this area other MLA is going to represent that area so the the purpose is that each and every constituency of a state should represent a proportionate amount of population, right? For example, consider I'm an MLA and I'm having a constituency where two crore people are there. And there's a other MLA who is actually representing same state representing a constituency where there's 50 lakh people. Don't you think it is actually, you can say injustice with the uh, people who are part of my constituency? Because for two crore people, one representative and there, for 50 lakh people one representative right so to reduce this kind of disparity this is the process which is used demarcation of constituency is done on the manner ratio between the population in each constituency and the number of seats in the state remains same okay now readjustment after each census now I also made a separate video on delimitation commission on the main study IQ channel in the Shoshank series you'll find that Okay, there was a specific video, but let's discuss this here also. After each census, a readjustment to be made in total number of seats 
in the assembly of the state each state division of each state into titled constituencies but this is what provision says but it doesn't actually happen right means you know that after 10 years we have census but after 10 years it is not necessary that number of seats and the title constituencies are being changed right so why are they not being changed because parliament has enacted delimitation commission act 1952 so this delimitation commission is responsible to decide the boundary okay of the constituency so the, these these acts were made for this purpose but 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976 had frozen the total number of seats, assembly of each state and the division of the state. So the point is, there was disparity in population, means in state-wise as well. For example, in 1970s, when government started this population control program, family planning program to some states, for example, southern states, they have done good job, right? For example, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Andhra, they have done good job. So that is why the population growth rate in these states after this 1970s was considerably managed in comparison to the other states like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Now think, if you, after 10 years you are actually bringing a census and you are also deciding on the basis of population that this particular state is going to have how many seats in Lok Sabha as well. So don't you think this would be injustice with the southern states? Because northern states have not done their homework well and the population has increased leaps and bounds and since they have more population then by the logic of delimitation commission now these highly populated, populated st states are going to have more seats in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha than these southern states so don't you think this is wrong these states have done good job and that is why their representation is being reduced right to reduce such disparity that is why these seats were actually later you know uh, this readjustment was banned for some time. As of now, uh, this is uh, this readjustment is going to happen after 2026. Now, some of you would think, think, sir, why 2026? Because idea was that in between this time, this growth rate disparity between states can be normalized, minimized. But there are some opinions against that as well. But we should know that as per 84th Amendment Act, it has been, you can say, uh, you can say frozen till 2026. Now, later 87th Amendment Act 2003 provided for the delimitation of constituencies on the basis of 2001 census and not 1991 census. However, now what is going to happen? Just read this line. This can be done without altering the total number of seats in the assembly of each state. We are not going to alter the total number of seats. Now, some of you would be thinking, sir, we got the point that uh, the number of seats from each state in Lok Sabha need not to be reduced. Otherwise, this would be like less representation to, to that state in parliament, right? But why there's such hue and cry on reducing or increasing the number of seats in state? So this should, this can happen. So the point is, if a particular state, say northern state, got more population and their number of seats are increased, so don't you think their weight in election of president will also increase? Because in election of president, who votes? Elected MLA's vote, right? So to reduce this disparity, this logic was said, ki you are not going to alter the total number of seats in the assembly of each state, okay? Reservation of seats for SCs and STs. Now, if I ask, a statement is minimum 15% seats as per constitution, minimum 15% seats need to be reserved for SCs and STs in each, each state, in each, each state legislature. Do you think that statement would be correct? I say 7.5% say for STs and 15% for SCs. Now tell me, is it correct? Answer is no. Why? Because reservation is there, but as per population. It may be possible now that there's some state where there's, uh, you know, no population of tribals. What is going to happen then? What is the use of having 7% seats reserved for STs there? Right? That is what the logic was on the basis of population. Clear? So you should not mark wrong answer in exam now. Our reservation was initially for 10 years. All of are aware of this. Later it was extended and then it was kept on extending. Now, composition of council. Unlike the members of legislative assembly, the members of legislative council are indirectly elected. I told you, indirectly elected plus nominated. 
okay now what is the maximum strength of legislative council so constitution constitution is not said ki uh, or any law is not saying ki this is going to be the maximum strength it simply says maximum strength cannot be more than one third of the total seats of legislative assembly means mac at one third of the total strength of the assembly and minimum strength is 40 what does it mean consider maximum is uh, total strength of a legislative assembly is 90 okay now tell me the total strength of legislative council of that state can be what one third of 90 is 30 right so it means the total strength of legislative council of that state can be 30 okay it means that size of the council depends on the size of the assembly this can be a direct statement which can be asked because i told you the size of legislative council depends on the size of legislative assembly one third logic maximum now manner of election in legislative council we are talking about because in legislative assembly there is direct election from the people legislative council one third of the members are elected by members of local bodies panchayats municipalities municipal corporation one twelfth are elected by graduates now some of you might be thinking sir we are graduate and we have not never voted in uh, this legislative council election because for that you need to be added in electoral role of that state for this legislative council elections then 112 are elected by teachers of 3 years standing in the state not lower in standard of secondary level please go to this kind of detail as well then 1/3 are elected by members of the legislative assembly and the remaining are nominated so how you can remember it easily 1/3 is more than 1/12 right so more weight in this indirect election of legislative council member is given to political representatives this these are political representatives members of local bodies and these mlas members of legislative assemblies these are also political so 1/3 1/3 seats 1/3 1/3 seats are decided or you can say elected by political okay now comes the role of teacher and student means graduate so teacher and student have 1/12th 1/12th right and remaining 1/6th they are nominated by governor right it is quite easy now on what basis governor can actually nominate obviously on the advice of council of minister of the state but their bases are literature science art cooperative movement social service it means five areas are there okay so it means 5/6 of the total members of the legislative council are indirectly elected means 1/3 1/3 1/12 1/12 it means 5 by 6 and 1/6 are nominated by governor okay now duration of two houses normal term is 5 year i'm saying normal term it may possible before that all right house can be dissolved how are governors authorized to dissolve the house before that on on the advice of council of minister right the term of assembly can be extended during the period of national emergency by law of parliament one year at a time for any length of time this we discussed in emergency chapter as well right the extension cannot continue beyond a period of 6 months after emergency ceases to operate in case of national emergency we are talking about okay now duration of the council now equate this with rajya sabha legislative council is a permanent body one third of its members retire on the expiration of every second year same in case of rajya sabha we discussed right so the vacant seats are filled by fresh elections nomination by governor at the beginning of every third year this happens so it means total duration would be 6 years for that particular member of legislative council if i say the tenure of legislative council of state legislature is 6 years do you think that statement would be true no because there is no tenure to the permanent house tenure word means it this particular position or this particular house will cease to actually exist after this time there is the need, need of separate separate election right but this is not the case of legislative council it is same in case of rajya sabha right the retiring members are also eligible for re-election re-nomination any number of time there is no bar on that not in this question you know in delhi the delhi is a ut but it is a special case in delhi you have legislative assembly you have cm arvind kejriwal right in which year this was actually turned into a legislative legislative assembly of 70 members so answer is 92 1992 now members of state legislature membership qualification should be a citizen of india subscribe oath by the election commission for 
member be, becoming a member of legislative council minimum age is 30 same in case of raj sabha as in case of lok sabha minimum age is 25 same in case of legislative assembly 25 the parliament has laid down qualifications of representation of people act representation of people act provisions are same as in case of parliament a person to be elected legislative council must be an elector now other provisions are same for example disqualification provisions okay but these provisions are specific question may be asked okay and upsc might try to confuse you by saying for uh, fighting election of a lok sabha mp that person should be a registered elector in that particular constituency now tell me the statement would be true or false in comments now come back to this if you want to become member of legislative council then you should be an elector for any assembly of constituency of that state if you want to become member of legislative council you need to be an elector in that state and to be qualified for governor's nomination he must be a resident of concerned state right concerned a person to be elected to the legislative assembly must be an elector for an assembly constituency in the concerned state simply you can remember for becoming a member of legislative council elected for uh, legislative assembly you need to be an elector in a concerned state for for this particular part nomination part idea is resident there's a difference between elector and resident it may be possible i'm elector uh, uh, added in voting list of different state but for for past few years i'm living in this in this state different state so i can be nominated it may be possible that my name is yet to be added but since i'm a resident here i can be added all right he must be a member of scheduled caste scheduled tribe if he wants to be contest as reserved seat however a member of scheduled caste scheduled tribe can also contest a seat of other you know general category this is obvious disqualification office of profit unsound mind or when charges of unsound mind then that person should be declared so by the court undischarged insolvent it means that person is on the verge of bankrupt has done gone bankrupt it means now this person cannot be trusted with the public money responsibility not a citizen of india voluntarily acquires foreign citizenship then your citizenship then your membership is going to go is disqualified under any law made by parliament any law for example representation of people act law he must not have been found guilty of certain election offenses offenses same as in case of lok sabha raj sabha he must not have been convicted of any offense resulting in imprisonment for two or more years i hope you remember the case of lalu prasad yadav i mentioned that when i was discussing parliament detention of person preventive detention law is not a disqualification this can be a question scope if you are de detained under preventive detention you you are not going to be disqualified as an mla he must not be a director or managing agent holding office of profit in a company where come government share is more than 25% or at least 25% he must not have been dismissed from the government service for corruption and disloyalty if someone is dismissed dismiss means removal on these charges then that that person cannot become mla disqualification on ground of defection same anti defection law means tenth schedule says legislative council in ca in case of legislative council who is going to take decision of disqualification anti defection chairman in case of legislative assembly speaker supreme court ruled that decision of chairman deputy speaker in this regard are subject to judicial review means whether they have followed the proper rule or not now vacation of seats if double membership is there you cannot be member of state legislature as well as parliament disqualification we discussed right so disqualification grounds are three same in case of parliament means constitution representation of people act and anti defection law absence if you are absent from more than 60 days without any intimation action can be taken resignation if you have resigned now attempt discussion parliament may parliament by law may appoint governor of a state as the administrator of an adjoining union territory tell me the statement is true or false the statement is false although some of you might be referring to this part ha huh? the statement seems correct but what about this parliament by law you don't need a separate law by parliament to actually give additional charge to a state governor of, as an administrator right second if a governor of a state is appointed as, as an administrator of an adjoining union territory he shall exercise independently of the council ministers consider you are governor of say maharashtra and you are given additional charge as administrator of lakshweep there is a charge of administrator there that's a ut so do you think for 
for your functions as administrator of that Lakshweep, you need to take advice from Maharashtra Council of Minister. No, right? So that is why second statement is correct. Answer is B. As regards legislative powers, the governor of a state is not part of state legislature. The governor of a state has no emergency power to meet the situation arising from external aggression. Now, I hope you remember when we started this parliament part, and I gave you example. In case of parliament, it is Lok Sabha, Ras Sabha, and President. In case of state legislature, it is state legislative assembly. If there is legislative council also, state legislative council, as well as governor. And first statement saying, as regards legislative power, governor of a state is not part of state legislature. How can it not be a part of state legislature? No bill can be turned as act without sign of governor, at least presented before governor. One way is presented to uh, president. But the point is, governor is the essential part of state legislature. And this part is correct because no emergency power is with governor. So second statement is correct. De jure head of the government is governor. State government is governor because de facto real head is CM. In which one of the following state it is not constitutionally obligatory to the governor to appoint minister in charge of tribal affairs. That's a factual part we discussed in the start. In an election to a state legislative assembly, a candidate is declared defeated, lost his deposit. It means means zamana zapt hona means in which case it will happen. Candidate got failed to secure one six, even one six to the valid vote polls. Then it means even your uh, even the deposit which you have given that is going to be forfeited. A speaker of the legislative assembly is elected by the members of the assembly. Same in case of Lok Sabha. Which one of the following is part of electoral college of the election of president, but does not? This question was asked by UPSC in prelims. Does not form part of the forum of impeachment. So, in case of election, member of legislative assembly elected, they are part, right? But when it comes to impeachment, do you think MLAs participate? No, right? In impeachment, it is just parliamentarians. So, it means answer is D. State legislative assembly. I hope now this part is clear to you. See you in the next video. Till then, keep learning, keep growing. If you have any doubt, you can shoot me a message on my personal insta, shishang.powerbeing. See you.